we do have a relatively high matric pass rate this year, but a lot of people are arguing that lots of people have been taking maths literacy and a 30% pass rate for matric isn't helping either. Can you explain this? Yes. So the matric pass rate, because it's just a calculation of the proportion of students that are passing divided by those that are writing, um, one way which we've already discussed that you can increase the pass rate is just by preventing students from getting to matric. You force the weaker students to drop out in grade 10 and grade 11. But the other way of improving the matric pass rate is by encouraging students to take different subject combinations, easier subject combinations. And as you said, taking maths literacy as opposed to taking a subject like maths. Um, why this is problematic is that if more and more students are taking maths literacy, this limits their options for further study either at FET colleges or at universities depending on what they want to study. And just to give you some of the stats, um, in, in 2008 you had 56% of students that were taking mathematics, uh, whereas in 2013 it, it, that's come all the way down to 43% of students that are taking mathematics with the remainder obviously taking maths literacy. This is only marginally down from last year. In 2012, 44% of students took um, core maths as opposed to maths literacy. But it's still concerning that we have this trend of a declining number of students that are taking maths literacy. Now, in some senses, it's legitimate that students would choose easier subject combinations or subject combinations that are more suited to their aptitudes. It's not a bad thing if a student that would have otherwise failed maths now decides to take maths literacy and passes. That's not a bad thing. Uh, what is a bad thing is when teachers and principals are encouraging students that may have passed on core maths to take maths literacy. That is a problem. What exactly is the problem with us having matriculants who were capable of taking core maths and are now taking maths literacy? What, what happens um, after matric? So their labour market prospects are severely limited based on if they take subjects which actually don't have a lot of purchase in the labour market. So if they take maths literacy and they manage to pass matric, they're one of that 40% uh, of students that actually pass matric out of the entire cohort. Um, they still need to go to an employer and they'll say, these are the subjects that I've taken at uh, high school. They'll have to go to a university and say, these are the subjects that I've taken. And at, at university, sometimes maths literacy is not an option. If you want to do a BCom at Stellenbosch, if you want to take any courses in engineering, maths literacy is not an option. You have to have taken core maths. But even if we look at employers, many employers will say, did you take maths? And by that, they actually mean core maths, not maths literacy. So it's not just that it limits people's university options. It can also limit their options uh, for employment pre-university or if they even don't go to university. Um, and that's an important thing to take into account. And it's not necessarily something that a career advisor in an under-resourced, disadvantaged school is taking into account. What they're taking into account is they don't have teachers that can actually teach core maths uh, or teach core maths well or teach core maths confidently. So some people have been asking, is it really that these students have learning disabilities, that they can't take maths, or do we have teachers that have teaching disabilities?